Now to get into the main topics for this episode of Time to Football, a lot of head coaching candidates on the hot seat. One, after an 0-4 start, has already been fired, and that is Houston Texans head coach slash general manager slash executive vice president slash owner slash punter, kicker, quarterback, defensive end, Manta Taya's girlfriend. He wanted full control, and it ended up biting him in the butt. Bill O'Brien has been fired by the Houston Texans, and he is no longer the active uh, general manager or head coach of the Houston Texans. Instead, the interim head coach for the time being is going to be their defensive coordinator, Romeo Cornell, who's actually a very well-respected uh, coach in the NFL, whether he's a head coach or a defensive coordinator. But for Bill O'Brien, what does this mean for B.O.B.? Cal McNair, the owner for the Houston Texans who took over after his father passed away, had enough of this. He was like, you know what? We're out. We're done. We trusted you. We want to give you full control. You wanted to be the Bill Belichick of the Houston Texans just build this dynasty and do all these things because you come from this Bill Belichick coaching tree. We trusted you. We really did. And even though you had some good seasons, yeah, you made the postseasons for a number of consecutive uh, years. You had six playoff games. Yeah, that's that's great and all, but the trades and the transactions that, that you made, we just don't get it. We don't understand, so we're moving on. So Bill O'Brien has been relieved of his duties after putting up a 52-48 to record, which is actually kind of an even number. It's kind of cool. He uh, coached 100 games, so they fired him after his 100th game. So congratulations on that milestone. Uh, two and four in the postseason in the playoffs, and it kind of unraveled a little bit after all the transactions and all the trades and all the playoff losses that Bill O'Brien and the Houston Texans suffered following the, I would say, after 2018, going into maybe 2019. Uh, there's a lot of transactions. We're going to read off a few of these. The the most important and the most recent that uh, comes to everybody's minds is getting rid of DeAndre Hopkins, a top three wide receiver in the NFL, for basically not too much. I, and that, that's not discrediting David Johnson and Brandon Cooks because I think those guys are good players. But Bill O'Brien felt like, hey, maybe I'm playing Madden franchise mode. Maybe I can get someone like Brandon Cooks, get a second-round pick out of DeAndre Hopkins as well, get David Johnson. And by the way, when I say Brandon Cooks, they eventually used the second-round picks that they got. They had two second-round picks, and they used one of them to get Brandon Cooks from the Rams. So essentially, it was DeAndre Hopkins for uh, Brandon Cooks and David Johnson at the end of the day. But maybe I could just get David jo or David Johnson and Brandon Cooks, and I could just put up the same amount of numbers in this Madden franchise mode with Brandon Cooks as DeAndre Hopkins, because we all know Madden. They don't use the. There's no difference between using Brandon Cooks and DeAndre Hopkins in the game. Maybe I could just do that. But this is real life, and DeAndre Hopkins is much more talented than almost, if not every single wide receiver in the NFL. Now I know there's Michael Thomas up there. I know there's Julio Jones. I know there's. Plenty of good wide receivers out there, but DeAndre Hopkins is definitely in the top three. But following that loss against the Minnesota Vikings, where they lost 31-23, to off of a controversial touchdown pass to Will Fuller, I, I will admit that. But after losing that game, Bill O'Brien stated that every transaction that he made was for the best interest for the team. And a lot of people... We're puzzled by that statement. It doesn't make a lot of sense when you get rid of Hopkins for uh, Brandon Cooks and David Johnson. Also, if we want to look a year prior to that, at the beginning of 2019, during the preseason, they made another trade to acquire more players, and that was Laramie Tunsil and Kenny Stills from the Miami Dolphins. What did they trade away? First-round picks, two of them, and a second-round pick. For Laramie Tunsil, good offensive lineman, Great offensive lineman, one of the best in the NFL. But Kenny Stills, good receiver, not great, not your number one for any team, a good piece and a good player for you to have depth on your wide receiver uh, depth chart, but not enough to for a first-round pick or two first-round picks. But I think the bulk of that came from, from Laramie uh, Tunsil, that the Miami Dolphins, if they're willing to trade Tunsil, let's get the most out of Bill O'Brien. And he bit on it. He bit, and he did it, and he. a lot of crazy transactions happen, and you look where they're at right now, yeah, Tunsil has done his job, Stills has done his, done his job here and there, but it's just, 
you could have used a lot more you, with that capital that you had in the in the 2020 NFL draft. You needed defensive line help. You need help in the secondary. And instead, you chose to get rid of all of that and get these players. That I, I just, I don't know. I, I'm having a hard time. I, I'm, I'm trying to be you know, as positive as possible because I am not a head coach slash general manager slash staff member slash executive vice president slash owner slash punter, kicker, quarterback, um, and everything else in between. Troy Polamalu's hair, I'm not, I'm none of those. But Bill O'Brien just didn't make a lot of sense with the uh, transactions that he made. So a lot of question marks, a lot of uh, boneheaded decisions, I want to say, by the Bill O'Brien and the Houston Texans and just didn't make a lot of sense. So Romeo Cornell is now going to be the interim head coach. The executive vice president, Jack Easterby, is a name that was hired by Bill O'Brien. And he made the choice to fire the general manager at that time of the Houston Texans and give control to Bill O'Brien. Well, that guy, Jack Easterby, ended up being like, whoa, 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 whoa. What are you doing? We don't agree. We don't see eye to eye by a lot of these transactions that you're making. So I'm going to make the decision myself, and I'm going to fire you. So the guy that Bill O'Brien was in charge of, pretty much in charge of hiring, turned it around And he fired him. So I thought that was pretty funny. But he's in charge of picking a new head coach. And there's a lot of people, a lot of guys that in the NFL that a lot of people are talking about. There's, you know, the quarterback's coach of the Chargers with the work that he's been doing with uh, Justin Herbert, offensive coordinator of the Chiefs. There's, uh, I believe, Brian Dable is the offensive coordinator of the Bills. There's a lot of teams and a lot of um, coaching candidates out there for a lot of teams. And uh, we'll see down which route the Houston Texans elect to go to. But I do believe that this move of firing Bill O'Brien was the right move for the Houston Texans because after trying to be Bill Belichick for so long, listen, you can only do so much and you ended up failing. 